Bayer Villiger oxidation going to be the topic of this lesson. Uh, in the Bayer Villiger oxidation, we convert uh, a ketone to an ester or an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid, in either case using a peroxy acid. We'll talk about how you predict the products and we'll also cover the mechanism. Now this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so let's start with ketones here. And so uh, with a ketone and a peracid or peroxy acid for, uh, so peracid is short here, but peroxy acid, the proper name. And you might just recall that a peroxy acid looks a lot like a carboxylic acid, but it looks like it just has one too many oxygens in it. And most notably, you also learned that MCPVA, metachloroproxybenzoic acid, the most famous peroxy acid of all time. So sometimes you'll see MCPVA written uh, as the reagent, just like we saw with alkenes. They convert alkenes into epoxides as well. Well, now we'll find out they convert ketones into esters, aldehydes into carboxylic acids. So, uh, so in this case, it turns out it's just going to insert an oxygen on one side of the ketone or another, making it an ester. Now, didn't have to start with a cyclic ketone here like I'm going to. It works for, you know, whether they're cyclic or open chain, same diff. So big thing you got to know, though, is that Whichever alpha carbon adjacent, uh, again, alpha is the one adjacent to the carbonyl, whichever one is more substituted in your ketone, that's where the oxygen is going to insert. And so here's the one on the right that's more substituted, and so that's where it's going to insert here. And so I'm going to insert it on that right side, the oxygen. And so now, in this case, my five-membered ring is now turned into a six-membered ring with an extra oxygen there, again, on the side that had the more substituted alpha carbon. So that would be our product. And again, this didn't have to be a cyclic ketone, but it does form a cyclic ester, but had an open chain ketone, it would form an open chain ester, again, on whichever side is more substituted. Now, we say it's on whichever side is more substituted, which is going to make this a little bit tricky, because here, on an aldehyde, the side of the carbonyl it's always going to substitute on is the hydrogen side. And so, in no chance of it going next to the carbon here. It's just going to go next to the hydrogen, in which case we're just going to form a carboxylic acid. Now, you might recall that we already know how to convert aldehydes to carboxylic acids, and so a lot of people, when they cover the bayer villiger oxidation, they don't even talk about aldehydes. We can do this with chromic acid, right? So, however, this is what it would accomplish had you mixed it with an aldehyde, and this is a chapter on aldehydes and ketones. So, now we're going to talk about the, the mechanism here. Uh, going back with uh, our, our lovely ketone and a proxy acid. And again, I'm going to leave this generic for a proxy acid, but again, this could be metachloroproxybenzoic acid and draw a specific R group. It could just be a methyl group and, uh, you know, variety. But I'm going to leave it generic uh, for the purpose of our mechanism here. And so first thing that's going to happen is nucleophilic attack, just like all of our other reactions in this chapter. We're going to have nucleophilic attack by the uh, oxygen furthest away from the carbonyl here, pushes the electrons up to the oxygen there. All right, that's going to take us to this lovely intermediate here, and maybe actually be more convenient if I drew this just a little bit different from a mechanistic standpoint. So I'm going to rotate that bond around, get the oxygen over here, because we're just about to use it. So we're just going to do a proton transfer reaction, intramolecular though. And so we're going to deprotonate this oxygen in the process of protonating that one over there. Oh, lost my negative formal charge there. All right, that gets us to this lovely intermediate. Oh, I lost my methyl group all the way across. I really want to make a point of doing the same reaction we were doing up here. So let's add that in. That methyl group was there. And so because, again, this side is more substituted than this side, that's where the oxygen is going to insert itself. So it turns out what's going to happen here is these electrons here now are going to come back down, reform the double bond oxygen. Well, we'd violate the octet rule. Instead of this just pushing off uh, and leaving, getting us just right back to the original ketone we had, that would be pointless. What's actually going to happen is a funky rearrangement here where we're going to form a bond between this carbon and this oxygen right here. So this is going to open up and form right here, pushing these electrons over here and these electrons over here. And voila. So 
So in this case now, the auction here has inserted itself into this five-membered ring, making it a six-membered ring. And then this reagent over here, if we kind of follow things around, so we've now got a single bond to this auction here, which is an OH, but a double bond to this auction over here. And so our byproduct here is a carboxylic acid. So but that's the whole mechanism in this bayer villiger oxidation. It turns out uh, in your intermediates here, there's a fair amount of partial positive charge buildup on that carbon right there. And that's why it's going to insert on this side. So it turns out whichever side it inserts, that's where the partial, uh, the buildup of partial positive charge is going to be. And it's more stable on a more substitute carbon, just like a more substituted carbocation is the more stable carbocation. So no actual carbocation intermediate, but in the transition state, again, there is a buildup of partial positive charge on that carbon. So that's why it inserts on the more substituted side. That is your bayer villiger oxidation. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best thing you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you are looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems on ketones and aldehydes, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.